Have you ever wondered what it'd be like if one of those planes shot a laser at you from the sky? No? Well, it's probably already happened. Whoa, 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 wait, before you call the police on me, I can explain. This is Felicia the Photon. She's a tiny but mighty particle of light used in the lasers that help map our Earth, including you in your backyard. Today, she's not trying to spy on us, but she'll help us understand how LIDAR, or light detection and ranging, works. Let's start with the first part of LIDAR, the light, or specifically, laser light. Unlike regular light that spreads out and blurs when I point it at the wall, laser light is monochromatic, directional, and coherent, so it'll focus on just one area. With these properties, lasers can send out concentrated light that reaches surfaces and reflects back to the transmitter with great accuracy. Different surfaces also reflect light differently. Some bounce back more light, while others absorb it. By adjusting the laser's wavelength, we can optimize the detection of specific surfaces. That's right, Felicia. It's kind of like choosing the perfect vacation destination, whether it's a beach, forest, or mountain. Accordingly, lighter wavelengths are mainly located in the near-infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum, between 750 nanometers to 1.5 micrometers, just beyond what the eye perceives. At this wavelength, photons emitted by lasers, like Felicia, can easily penetrate atmospheric particles like dust and clouds to return clear signals. Now, when Felicia strikes something more solid, say a tree, part of her energy is absorbed by the surface, but the other part bounces back to the sensor. How much energy is returned determines intensity. How much time it takes determines distance. Let's break down the math. If we know how long Felicia travels and how fast, which is just the constant speed of light, then by the time of flight principle, we also know how far she travels. We just divide the distance by two to account for the send and return trips. Unfortunately, not every photon survives the journey. Many of Felicia's friends are scattered or absorbed by surfaces, which is why lighter systems send out trillions of photons per pulse, thousands of laser pulses per second, to ensure at least one photon returns to record data. By measuring the return times of successful photon trips, lighter systems can generate a 3D point cloud of the Earth's surface, where each point represents a photon reflected from a specific spot. These point clouds allow scientists to map topographical features in detail, analyzing everything from four density to agricultural fields, track ice sheet melting, and monitor natural disasters like floods. This summer, I actually had the chance to study wildfires in California and sustainable plantation management in Brazil using the LiDAR satellite ISAT-2, which was launched by NASA in 2018. Aboard ISAT-2, Felicia would travel to Earth and back every nanosecond, or one billionth of a second. But this precision allows ISAT-2 to measure vertical distances with an accuracy down to 10 centimeters, and also helps me contextualize the world around me. Whether it's evaluating canopy cover before and after fires, or estimating stem volume from height measurements, LiDAR lets scientists analyze landscape characteristics without physical contact, enabling rapid and accessible vegetation study. Next time you step outside, think about how millions of photons like Felicia are working together and working hard to help scientists better understand our planet, even if you can't see it. Remember, science is never more than a photon's journey away.